Four D's and a C, my fourth high school, but being committed to not remaining dumb and becoming my family's first college graduate. So, uh, my name is Sean Bowers, and uh, I played on the uh, Region 16 championship team in 82, 83, and then I played with one of my teammates, Sam Moore, back here in 83, 84, when we were the conference champs, B State Fair in the western half, and then lost to Three Rivers for the championship. One of the things that I put together is I made some of my own memorabilia stuff. And this is a uh, medallion you get when you win a championship is a gold one. And that reminds me every day that I was a state champion, not just once, but three times, here and in two other states, Washington and in Virginia. And then the second one is a silver one, which reminds me of my runner-up state championship where I could have been a four-time state champ. The reason I do that is because it's important to remind yourself that you're championship quality, but it's also important to remind yourself when you don't achieve a championship, how close and how painful it was, that can be great motivation for you to get the next opportunity. Because a lot of y'all are gonna go on and play after this somewhere else two years after that. So what I do is I go and look at my program is visualize, and visualize is basically V1, Z, U, A, L, 1, Z, E. And people are saying, you don't spell visualize with ones and Zs. That's not grammatically correct. Yes, I know that. I did it this way because the U is the ditch of uncertainty that we all have to come and deal with in our lives and overcome obstacles. For me, when I was a kid, my mom raised me in a one-room garage apartment. You could fit two beds in our house together in Virginia Beach where I grew up. My dad went to jail when I was five. I was in foster care for six weeks by myself at the age of five. Graduated my fourth high school with four D's and C. I got a scholarship opportunity to come to Moberly to visit on a play-in trip. And I covered a guy who played in the NBA, Gerald Wilkins, Dominique Wilkins' brother. None of you guys know who that is because it was 37 years ago. But he was All-American and covered Michael Jordan in the NBA. Now, he was a junior college All-American and I was a high school player coming in. And the coach picked me up from the airport in St. Louis and drove me over and he said, Sean, I'm talking to you and you sound a little smarter than four D's and a C. What's going on with those transcripts? And I said, coach, I was uh, basically chasing girls and playing basketball and not paying attention to school. And I went to four different high schools and I kind of got tired of it, but I'm smarter than that and I can do the college level work. And he said to me, you're gonna need your education to fall back on to make money and earning potential opportunity and the ability to deliver and move yourself out of your mom's basement when you get your degree. So you need to focus on that. He said, what do you like to do when you play basketball? What's your, what are your specialties? I said, coach, just put me on your best player when I'm fresh and let me work my way down from there. I don't care if he's six foot or seven foot. I'm gonna stop whoever that guy is. He said, okay, I'm gonna put you on my All-American. So the next day comes and they throw the tip up and the ball goes to Gerald and he's two, three inches taller than me and lightning quick and he's right-handed. So I step this way to force him to his left and he fakes this way to go right and I step over here and then he goes right past me where I was and two hand dunks the ball. And the ball comes out of the net and I grab it. And all I can think in my mind is, welcome to college basketball. If you don't play better than that, this is gonna be a really short stay. That was the last dunk that he had of the day. My team was able to win all seven games. On the way back to the airport the next day, Coach Carriker said to me, and he's the gentleman that's being honored at the reunion on the far right, he's passed away. He died on September 11th, a few years ago, 2006. But he said to me, he said, Sean, I've never seen anyone play Gerald tougher, stronger, and better than you. And I said, Coach, all that mattered to me is my team won all seven games. And he said, I noticed that too. That's why I want to offer you a scholarship. So I came to Moberly, earned my scholarship, earned a state championship here, and then a runner-up state championship, and placed myself in position to get another scholarship to go up the road, up to Highway 63 to Des Moines, and I went to NAI school, Grandview College up there. And it was all based on 
not me being a great player, but me recognizing what I can do using class. And class is an acronym for competitive legacy accountability through structured service. And that means that you recognize what your strengths are and you maximize each little mathematical part of the game. And you win those parts and all of those fractions total up to a win in the scoring column on the scoreboard. So, what am I talking about? How many of you use the glass on every shot that you shoot when possible? Do you know why you do that other than coach telling you to do that? Do you know the mathematical reason? Correct. So let's do a little mathematical percentage. Good answer. Shoot the ball short. How many chances do you have for it to go in if you shoot it short? Right. But now, pretend like my chest is the backboard. How many chances do you have when you shoot it over and use the backboard? Is it more than one? Why? Because the ball can bounce around on the rim, go in. What else good can happen? Once it's up there, who knows where a missed shot's going better than the person who shot it? No one. So you can go get your own miss because you know where it came from. Do you understand how I just demonstrated that if you use the backboard on every shot possible, you will not only double your shooting percentage, but you will increase your chances for an offensive rebound. Now, when you shot the ball short, shoot off my hands. It bounces back at you, right? What are you doing when it bounces back? You're running back on defense, playing defense. How many of you like playing defense more than offense? Defense is a lot of work, right? <laughs> Somebody better, Sam, don't raise your hand because you ain't playing there. No, she was long. raising her hand. It's been 30 years since you played me, dude. <laughs> and even then, it was, right here was raising her hand, you missed her. I saw. I was glad to see somebody raise their hand. Now, what is the best shot for your team on each possession? Do you know? A two? A two? The best shot is a mathematical formula. I keep coming back to math. Fractions that end up being the total for the win. The best shot is the, you're a 44% shooter and you're a 50% shooter, and you're, when you're healthy, a 62% shooter. Who should get the most shots? Well, it's Zala. No, well, who should get the most shots? There's only one right answer. You go with the 62, right? That's the math. We're talking about, if, and the reason I'm saying this is because when I came to Marberly, I was a 50% shooter, and I thought, man, I can make half the shots that I shoot. I should get to shoot a lot. And then I came and I played with a guy who was the junior college player of the year who shot 65%. So it made more mathematical sense to get him the ball to shoot a higher percentage to win more of that battle to win the scoreboard battle. Now, what does that require you guys to do? And I watched y'all play at Self State Fair the other night. And I saw some good things. You guys winning by a large margin. That was good. But I also saw some things where there were some people who were open that had an easier shot than the shot that was taken. Does that recognize a bell for you? How many people feel like they got missed when they were open and had a better shot and didn't get the ball? Now, it's going to happen. Here we go. It's going to happen. Sometimes guys are going to get missed. Sometimes Sam is going to catch the ball. Sometimes it's going to go out of bounds. But my point is, at the end of the clock, when you have to take a shot because the clock is running down, then you take the best shot that you can get as an individual. But Coach would like to have you work from highest percentage shooter who makes the most shots down to the lower percentage shooters who don't make as many. The rule of thumb used to be if you can't make half of your shots, you shouldn't be shooting that shot in the game. Until you can demonstrate it that you can make it in practice, I don't know, is that still the rule that you go by, Coach? 
I have to ask because sometimes coaching philosophies change. Now, you may say, who is this guy? And, you know, what does he know? I'm going to just say that I played in Washington, Virginia, and Missouri. And I can go into this gym and two other gyms and look at banners that are hanging that will never come down. That is my competitive legacy accountability and structured service in a form that I'll always be able to look at. This is my letter sweater that I put together of all the schools that I played for. I was lucky enough to play for four different coaches that are in four halls of fame. Each one of you has a letter sweater that's not decorated that you can decorate with your accomplishments. So the goal is, how do you win the mathematical battles to best help you win your matchup and the team win the fractional comparison of all those numbers added together? You do it by sacrificing for each other. Okay? You do it by setting picks. You do it by talking on defense. You do it by helping each other. You do it by being early and being last to leave. You do it by working harder than other people. Banners don't come down, but they don't go up by accident. They go up because people take accountability and they do structured service to help each other maximize their potential. How much of the 100% success are you responsible for if you were on the court? It's a mathematical question. 45%. No, it's not 45%. <laughs> if you got four people that you're playing with and you're the fifth, then you are responsible for 20% of the success. So that means the other four people are all responsible for what? Their 20%. Now when someone comes in as a sub, they inherit that 20% and they're responsible for that 20%. That means that you're only going to be successful and hang banners and championships and earn that scholarship to the next level, to the four-year school, which I know is the goal of all of you because it was the goal for Sam and I. Sam left Moberly and went to Quincy and was an All-American at Quincy College. Don't ask me how he did it, but he did it. And I'm very proud to say that I have played with an All-American teammate. Now, Moberly's men's program produces 4.25 scholarship players to the next level every year for the last 50 years and all of those numbers right there. I do not know what the women's numbers are for that, but I know there's been at least one National Juco Player of the Year that was on that 82 team because she was here when I was here. Her name was Bojack, and she used to beat all of us. She was that good. How do you make yourself the best player that you can be? Anybody got any answers? Every day, you take out your desktop calendar and you track your commitment to your dream, to your goal. The Visualize, and I go back to this, this is the name of my organization. The ditch is the uncertainty, the challenges, the obstacles we all have in life that we have to overcome and get to the other side. The first one is you before you overcome those ditch of obstacles, uncertainties, and challenges. The second one is once you see yourself being successful, then you become successful because you envisioned it and visualized it and made it become your reality. The reason I got my basketball scholarship is not because I was a great athlete. It's because I was willing to do all of the dirty stuff, set picks, play defense, deny people the ball, take away cuts, and help defend and draw charges. The stat that I'm the most proudest of in my career, other than winning three championships in three states as a player and as a coach, is I drew 27, 60 charges in 27 games my senior year in college. That means I was getting us two extra possessions plus per game. Those extra possessions are a mathematical character that helped us win games. 
You all have skills. You all have talents. You all have something to offer to Coach, to Moberly, to the community, to your family, and to the game. But you have stuff beyond that to offer to be the leaders of the people that are in your sphere of influence. How many of you have a college graduate in your family? How many of you don't? If you don't, then you are the leader that your younger siblings, nieces, nephews, cousins are all looking to. You all know that no matter what you do, the younger ones following behind you are looking at you. And if you do the right thing, they'll emulate that. If you do the wrong thing, they'll emulate that. Do the right thing. Make the choices that best give you the chance to hang banners using this mathematical strategy. So what I'm going to forward to Coach is a digital 10-page blueprint that teaches you how you can take these categories in a desktop calendar and try to start tracking your commitment to your goals. Am I trying to create legions of basketball players with this blueprint? No. I'm trying to take what my four Hall of Fame coaches, one who's in the Moberly Hall of Fame, one who's in going into the NCAA Hall of Fame, who's the all-time, uh, he's the head coach at Oregon now, and two coaches in Virginia that I played for in junior high and high school who both are in that Hall of Fame for the high school of Virginia. Now, you all have people in your lives that have seen you and see what you can be at your best. Now, everybody take their right hand and put it on top of their head. Now take your left hand and put it inside your like that. Put your left hand up here, way up here. Now, look up at that left hand and then look at the hand on top of your head. The left hand is the very best that you can be when you visualize yourself being your best. This is the player that coach sees and wants you to attain. The right hand on top of your head is where you are right now. Feel all that distance between there? That's the opportunity for you to grow, improve, measure your improvement, deliver on it. How many of you guys come in and run extra around the track to do conditioning? Is there a hand going up? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you something really real right now. The reason that I outplayed a guy who was a better athlete than me and beat him all seven games was not because I was a better basketball player than him. It was because I made him do things that he was uncomfortable doing. So what did I do? Number one, if he was, if she was Gerald, and he's right-handed, I immediately said, he is never, she is never going to beat me going to her strong hand. I'm going to force her to go left. And if she beats me going left with her weak hand, with me challenging and putting a hand in her face and making her shoot through my hand, and she still can make it, and I box her out, I can live with that. That's good defense. But if I don't, and I let her go to her strong hand, that's a mathematical stupid loss, unnecessary loss. So what does that mean that you need to recognize about every matchup when you're in a game? You need to know what? Is that person right-handed or left-handed? What else do you need to know? How quick is that person compared to my quickness? How far can I get up on them or back away from them and still be able to challenge without fouling. Why do we not want to foul the jump shooter? Do you know? Coach, you've told them that, right? Not to foul jump shooter, absolutely. Why do you not foul jump shooter, ladies? Because if you foul a jump shooter, instead of challenging and make them make a tough shot with a hand in the face going to their weak hand, you never find out whether they could have made that difficult shot or not. You bail them out and send them to the line and let them get easy buckets, easy points. Mathematical loss. Don't take mathematical losses. Okay? This is how you hang banners. You don't have to listen to me. I got my banners in state champion. You can do what you want. I'm sure the coach will re-emphasize the people who do the mathematical winning things are going to play. 
Because her deterrent is what? The bit or the door. If you don't do it enough, the door opens up and now you're not in the program anymore. I'm not saying you would send anyone home, coach, but if you don't pay attention enough and you don't do the right thing, look at how many guys have disappeared from the men's program. Every year in junior college that Sam and I went to school and have ever watched junior college, there is a minimum of two to three guys from every program that wash out. Grades, trouble with the law, stupid stuff, chasing girls, not eligible, whatever. Homesick. Don't be that. Okay? Now, you guys have any questions? Anything you would like to ask about basketball? I want to wrap this up and let you guys get to the real meat of the matter because I know you got, is it mineral air tomorrow too? Yeah, yeah tomorrow. That's her alma mater. Coach wants to win that game more than any other on the schedule. Am I right? Did you guys pick up on that? <laughs> Did you emphasize that? Yeah, you probably know. told him that, right? Yeah. I didn't even need to know that. She just said she went to Middle Area, and I thought, wow, that's a tomorrow's game. She probably wants to win that pretty bad. Mathematical success doesn't happen by accident. It happens by choice. So you can either choose to be mathematically successful, or you can choose to be mathematically unsuccessful. Now, it never matters where you come from. It matters where you end up. And... Uh, I'm living proof of that. Sam's living proof of that. He went to a school so small, all they had was a tractor and some guys playing ball on a farm. Farm Coatesville, is that right? Centerville? Something? Union. Someville? Unionville, Missouri. Unionville. Someville somewhere. I knew what it was. Mecca. The Mecca. We drove past it and Sam said, this is it. And I said, there's not even a light here. <laughs> and yet he became a, a, an NAI All-American. So that tells you right there, it don't matter where you come from. It matters how you use the math in your favor, okay? When you guys get the blueprint, take it out, look at it, think about it. It's about how to be successful in life. Everything that applies to basketball applies to life. Now, I write for the third oldest black newspaper in the nation, the New Journal and Guide. It's been in existence for 120 years. I've been writing for him for 21 years. Across the top of the black, black newspaper it says, publishes since 1900 so that no good cause shall lack a champion. They give me a chance to write things that talk about overcoming racism, classism, sexism, and religious persecution. So that's what I do to empower the entire community around me and to maximize my sphere of influence for positive goals. All of you have a gift. I don't know what that gift is. I'm hopeful that when Coach gets the blueprint and gives all of you a copy of it, that you will sit down and look at it because it has some questions at the end of the blueprint. Did you take the blueprint out? Did you fill it out? Are you using desktop calendar to measure your commitment to your success? What sacrifices are you making to become successful? What challenges are you having? Who are your mentors? Who are your idols? Who are your goals? Who are you looking up to? All these things that you need to be thinking about. Because that's a championship banner hanging. And this is where you are. Now, this is a giant river. If you start here and you aim here, you're going to be short of the championship. But if you start here and the river's going down and you aim higher than the championship, now you can still get the championship. So you challenge yourself by taking control of four things. Your time, your attitude, your efforts, and probably most important, ladies, your responses. It is never what happens to you in life. It is how you respond, react, and recover. Those are all basketball terms. I respond, I recover, I react, I champion. End of the Thank you, Coach. Thank you. I'm going to get out of here. I'll be at the uh, reunion tomorrow. Are you taking the team to that, Coach? Or no?
all the reunion activity and stuff? Probably not. Probably not. You can wait for the day. You got to come in early on your morning. I understand. Thanks for the time, Coach. I'm going to get out of here. Same way I have the We're starting. Good luck, ladies. Thank yes, you. good luck. Finish the rest of the season. Are you the <laughs> Coach, let me get a card from you tomorrow. I'll email that to you. Okay. Yeah. We'll do it. Thank you. We put this in your Thanks, Sorry for making you the uh, butt of some of my uh, presentation. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I will see you guys at tomorrow's game. I'm going to take you guys out. Share the wealth. Share the basketball. Don't you think about the wealth? What's the best shot for the team? The highest percentage. Thank you. Good luck, ladies. Thank you. Number 11 and number two. Wow.